Escape into the mirror and find out where the heart and soul of extreme metal music comes from on this episode of Graphic Metal. Now heads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. Today is an extra special day for me personally as we are reviewing the final chapter of the trilogy project by Cavalier Brothers as they re-record and imagine the first three LPs and EP by the legendary act, Sepultura. I'm Max. I'm Andreas. I'm Igor. I'm Paul. Oh, we are Sepultura. This one, which was released today, June 21st, 2024, was their second full-length LP entitled Schizophrenia. So, let's break through the wall and find out if this project was worth it. <laughs> Schizophrenia, in my eyes, is one of the most important records ever in the history of extreme metal music. In fact, I want to say that it was, for me personally, the introduction of officially the dark side of extreme music. also kicked off one of the most memorable and genre-defining eras in music history. That being the five-album stretch from Sepultura consisting of this disc, Schizophrenia, released on October 30th of 1987, Beneath the Remains on April 7th, 1989, Arise, April 2nd, 1991, Chaos AD, October 19th, 1993, and Roots, March 12th, 1996. Each of them bringing something new to the table for metalheads to appreciate and get inspired by. Many bands over the years have indicated how important each of them were to the evolution of music. All of this began with Schizophrenia, which, as mentioned, was re-recorded and re-released today, June 21st, 2024, by the original brothers of Sepultura, the Cavalera brothers. We're, of course, talking about Max and Igor. Max, of course, was and always will be the front man of Sepultura. With his death-defying, unique, potent vocals and love for all things riffage. After probably James Hatfield, Max is like the second human being on, on the planet that we think of, at least I do, when thinking of rhythm riffing the god of of riffs right i mean it's like he lives and breathes this he has written <laughs> thousands of them over over the years we also all probably know the story of sepulture as far as what happened but just in case you don't max had a falling out with the band mace due to how they treated uh, you know, his wife and band ma manager at the time, Gloria. Plus the emotional stress of his son, Dana Wells, being killed in a car accident on August of 1996 while the band was playing at the Castle Donington Monsters of Rock Music Festival. Basically, shortly after Max's son's death, the band had the balls to confront Max and essentially wanted Gloria out as manager of the band regardless of how anyone feels. Let's just say that Max did not find that to be, well, pleasant. So he left Sepultura and 
probably has never recovered from that moment and therefore the relationship with several of the, of the members of the band. Heck, it was so emotional for him, he didn't even bother, you know, wanting to try to fight to keep the brand and band name Sepatura, which, I mean, says a lot about the emotional state he must have been in at that time. His brother, Igor, even stayed with Sepatura. So, for, for several more years, which caused then even a rift between them. But years later, they would reunite. Most likely due to the fact that, I mean, they are brothers after all. This was back in 06, 07, I want to say. A conspiracy project, right? Inflicted, 2008. Blunt Force Trauma, 2011. Pandemonium, 2014. Psychosis, 2017. Great stuff, right? It just always seems like when these two brothers get together, great music comes out. But... Unexpectedly, last year, we were blessed with something extra special. The brothers decided, well, if Sepatura aren't going to, well, damn it, we need to step up and do it. They did the unthinkable, much like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. No one thought this would ever happen. This was even possible. They decided to embark on a treacherous endeavor, one that would once and for all, you know, determine the fate, quite frankly, of the brothers, their, their mark in music history. This could have destroyed all of their legacies, their own along with Sepaturus, which despite them, you know, continuing forward without, you know, the other core members, what was never disputed was how important these initial albums by Sepatura were. Very few bands have united metal heads all across the world like Sepatura could. And that is because of their unique ability and importance to cross over between death, thrash, black, groove, and even new metal. And more None more evident, right, than on this album that we're talking about today, Schizophrenia. Whereas Schizophrenia also kind of had not the best of production. At least it was clear enough to make a mark in history and on so many people, including yours truly. And those first two were done so fucking well. It has instantly reminded everyone just how important this band was to so many people out there. And so, as a result, this now, this third part, was then therefore highly anticipated. These brothers just, they knew exactly what to do. They elevated the production on every level while maintaining the essence, the core magic of what the original did. It makes us all remember, relive, feel alive once again. Of the appreciation to details that they put in, I feel as so, I think it's important to unpack this further, shall we? <laughs> And let's first begin with the design and branding. The reworking paintings of all three, including now Schizophrenia, were done by the artist Elron Cantor. Just as with the intent of what to do with this musically, love the decision to keep things mostly intact and just kind of tweak it a little bit to capture even more of the original essence. As much as the designer in me would love to completely reimagine this, the reality is, is that these albums are so important to the history of extreme music. It would not have been wise to just completely change that. It would have come off as if it's not honoring and respecting what these albums were to so many people out there. I think Elrond does a beautiful job 
at just simply fine tuning, just as the brothers and the son do with the music. Um, I also think that because of his painting style technique, it allows these new covers to almost have like a historical, like art museum remembrance kind of quality to it, which I think is a genius move uh, because it it's literally as if it's saying, we know how important these albums are to you out there. Schizophrenia had the most to gain with the artworks being reworked. Elrond does just a great job at driving home that, you know, the shattered fourth wall, the glass that the original just couldn't capture. Again, because it wasn't designed by somebody that really truly embodied metal. Bravo, Elrond. Also, love the, the choice to recreate the Cavalier Conspiracy band logo. That every detail was not spared in making sure that it felt like the original. And rewinding for a moment all the way back to, you know, the originals. They got their friend, uh, Elishandri, uh, who also at that time was the bass player for a band called Shakal. Uh, to do the art for Bestiel. The idea of Bestiel came via essentially one of the demons from the from Conan the Barbarian. Essentially, it's the idea of the a giant demon, you know, sent to destroy uh, the Catholic Church. Satan and, you know, the middle finger to, you know, the organized church and such is just starting to take shape. Uh, in extreme music at that time that influenced them to just basically follow suit, at least initially. For Morbid Visions, they tapped another friend in Alexandra who was not a metal guy, but he was very skilled with the airbrush, which was a popular technique at that time in the 80s. But they mentioned that it was tricky because Alexandra kept drawing the demons in a way that was essentially, well, not, you know, metal. Uh, it was constant back and forth of them trying to, you know, get them to under, get him to understand the essence of this new kind of style of extreme, uh, extreme music. But for schizophrenia, he decided to sign uh, with this, this small little label, uh, Cogamo in, in, in uh, Brazil. In US, Monte Connor was, he's just a huge metal fan, right? As a teenager in, you know, roaming the streets of, of New York City, along with his buds that he used to call the, the three musketeers of, of New York. Sepatura themselves were actually discovered by Tan K. I really enjoyed it. I think they're excellent. Um, so now it's the first time I've, I've seen the band. Um, I've heard a lot about them, and uh, they lived up to everything I've heard about. Excellent. Who got a tape from one of his tape trading contacts in Brazil. This guy sent him a compilation of demos by six bands. On this tape was Sepatura's five-song BCL Devastation EP. He freaked out and, you know, turned it to Bravale and also then to Monte. After DJing for a bit, Monte got the opportunity with this Kickstarter new label called Roadrunner Records. And when he started, he took stock of all the bands up to that point that had made a mark to him to make a list of bands to potentially try to, to sign. Sepatura was, of course, one of them and would actually be his second band that he ever signed. Important to note that Schizophrenia was already released in Brazil via Cogamel, which we talked about. This was critical. It was vital that they were able to listen to that Schizophrenia um, album because when they listened to it, they felt like it was a monumental leap for the band compared to that EP Bestial. This was ultimately enough to get them to, you know, to, to sign. The most notable, of course, reason why Andreas Kisser, right, joins the band 
uh, for that record and was in many ways the only true musician for the band at that time, given that he coming in was a te te technician and was actually truly skilled. Uh, fun fact, Andreas also played bass on Schizophrenia, though not cre accredited as such. Also, what is interesting is despite Andreas being the key to what made, you know, this leap and the sound of sch Schizophrenia so much better, uh, is that the original guitarist from the first two, Jarrell uh, Guedes, uh, had written uh, and recorded essentially 95% of Schizophrenia before deciding to leave the band. The only song that Andreas, you know, from a fresh standpoint, actually brought into the album uh, was Escape to the Void, which was actually a song that he had already re-released and recorded from his previous band, uh, Pastillus, which was initially called Escape into the Mirror. Hence how I began this episode. Quite frankly, curious how many out there actually were aware of that. Back to the artwork for Schizophrenia. It was designed by, uh, so, uh, so basically, Cagamel's record, uh, the, the label from Brazil, remember that they were on initially. Uh, Patricia, who was one of um, you know, the founders of the record label, uh, it was actually her brother that actually designed uh, the Schizophrenia album cover. Um, the album, you know, what he was trying to go for was to visually depict like the, you know, the fourth wall being shattered. Again, using inspiration from the Scorpion's blackout, right? The glass, you know, breaking. He, a key reason why this album feels so different for its time is because it, it it doesn't really feel like metal. Uh, and that's because of that reason that, you know, some rock dude was was trying to, to capture the essence of extreme metal that he was not aware of. But in its favor, uh, the positive side of things is that I think that what ironically helped was is that it kind of signified how different this album was. And sure enough, it was. Thematically, the other reason why this album was such a step up uh, on every level was because Andrea suggested and brought the band the idea of approaching the stories and the lyrics in a different way. He was inspired by Anthrax's uh, spreading the disease and wanted, you know, Sepatura to move away from just the, you know, the, the obvious demon of Satan destroying the church approach and just think of it from a different perspective and on a much more thematic you know level he also helped them you know rework musically majority of the songs and just kind of thinking about the album on a holistic you know way this is this is key because i know personally that's why i also love this album so much is because it felt truly like a fully fleshed out idea beginning middle and end so that is the you know the album artworks but now let's break down you know the songs on this album it begins with an intro to set the mood which is also from the soundtrack uh, to the film Psycho. Before kicking off with the blazing, iconic, you know, trio of riffs on From the Past Comes the Storms. which instantly announces to the world that this is a new band, a band that surely knows how to riff. Thanks to one of the deadliest of combinations in Andreas and Max. I mean, whew, potent. This song has something like 10 different unique and iconic riffs on it. 
And what makes it so special is despite its relentless intensity and speed, this song just understands conceptually how to play with you. It's like a journey. You know, it's as if you are fighting the demons in your mind, right? Recalling your past, the endless possibilities of the future, and the dread and possibility of, well, going insane. To the wall continues that same approach. Amps up the complexity even further and introduces everyone to Igor, one of the greatest drummers in the world. This badass, like, you know, snare drumming sound that Igor just blasts his way through his entire drum kit in ripping speed. That sound is like a war machine shooting off, you know, cannons of like, you know, intense bullets to anyone that opposes. This album sees his hands and feet in, I mean, it's it's unlike anything else out there. It's, you know, his ability to present this feeling of just savage, tribal roots born from the depths of hell. His drumming is just out of this world. It feels relentless, you know, intense memorable right you can hear every snare every every beat every rhythmic pattern it's just the crystal clear nature of yet the you know brutal nature of him is is just so beautiful honestly make a, a petition out there to consider adding that moment into the musical library of congress just saying as it is about as metal as you can get. Uh, and speaking of metal, that outro, when Max belts out his, you know, evil, iconic laugh uh, to more of Igor's relentless drumming before that just iconic outro, which just truly feels like you are breaking through the fourth wall into a new dimension. Escape to the void. Probably the most iconic song on the disc and essentially allowed at the time Andreas to show off his wizardry, his mastery of the guitar. Both that and of course as mentioned the bass which he played on, uh, on the original album. It's just some sick bass lines on this one. But for the re-recording it's about Travis Stone who's also from the band Pig Destroy. And what an excellent choice this was. We easily can understand why he was chosen and tapped for this project. Marvelous, marvelous work, Travis. Rounding out the band for the re-recording is Max's own son, Igor Amadis Cavalera, who Max has then started to play along with with his with their own new band called Go Ahead and Die, which is you know pretty solid. It's worth worth checking out. We did a review on that um, a while a little while back. Um, in this case, Igor gets to show off his bass skills, and whew, what a hell of a bassist he is! It's it's remarkable. Uh, so one could easily say that you know, essentially a huge aspect to what makes this re-recording set, this trilogy, so successful, feel so warm and on point with the original, is the fact that we essentially got here a family re 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 reuniting, right? Like, that's basically 
you know, them coming together and their close bond is, is eminent on this. Next, we have my personal favorite song on the album, which is interesting given Max is one of my all-time favorite singers. Actually, this is an instrumental song. <laughs> But what a hell of an instrumental it is, and an underrated one, might I add. When you think of legendary instrumental songs, rarely does anyone ever bring this one to the table, but damn it, they should. I'm talking about, of course, Inquisition Symphony. It's beautiful. It's a, re it's a remarkable work of, of, of art. I just... You know, it actually was, is like my first uh, pep rally song I would listen to, you know, get myself pumped and, and ready to, to play like a, a sport game, like soccer or something like that. You know, that, that, and then, right, after, you got the evil scream of Max, in one of the most, you know, important of all metal. His, his you know, voice is so incredibly memorable, memorable and important to all of extreme uh, music. There's yet another aspect to the re-recording success is its ability to sound like larger than life, as if it is being played in Valhalla amongst the hall of the gods. Max's singing and screaming in particular is memorable because of that reason and that ability that they were able to capture that kind of vibe and essence. The double bass drumming is showed off impeccably on, on you know, septic schizo. unbelievable it's relentless uh, uh, abysmal feels like your soul is sitting in the dark next to a burning campfire and just being able to take a moment and breathe <sighs> before embarking on its final chapter r.i.p a.k. rest in pain. Which comes with a sick outro itself that feels like you have officially gone insane. Nightmares of Delirium then ends this album in a way that allows it to never, ever be forgotten. Whereas this re-release trilogy sadly must come to an end, it allowed and made this album truly feel like it will live on forever. It is made with such care, attention to detail, emotion, and skill that we are never going to forget it. Thank you, Travis, San Igor, and especially to YouTube brothers, Max and brother Igor Cavalera. It no longer is a conspiracy. Andreas and Paul may have had the skill and together you united as 
just a, a brutal force that the world has never, never heard before. And whereas we all wish and cross our fingers, hope that you will one day all be able to get past your rift from, from all these years ago and just find a way to get back together, at least for, for a little while. So this way we can pay you know, homage to, to how amazing you all were. But let's be honest, the heart and soul, not just Sepatura, but to really, honestly, all of extreme music and metal as a whole is the Cavalier Brothers. Do yourself a favor. Get this album today, tomorrow, whenever you get a chance. You will not be disappointed. From the past truly comes the storm. Graphic Metal Rating gives this one a 97. And pick up this guy when you get a chance. Today, tomorrow, whenever. You will not be disappointed. That was a review of Schizophrenia, the third and last part to the trilogy reworking re-recordings of the legendary iconic Sepatura's first two works of music. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little bit. I'd love to hear what you all think about uh, the, the reworking. Uh, and yeah, check out here are some other of Graphic Meadows videos and check back soon as again, we're still finishing up the, the next episode, which is going to be the Prague Rock and Metal Best New Albums from April through now June of 2024. Uh, coming very, very soon. Until then, cheers, keep on rocking.